My name is Steve Phillips. I'm the uh, chair and founder of PowerPack Plus. I'm delighted to uh, be here with you today. I'm delighted that, more importantly, that you're here with us today. Um, and we're really excited about this opportunity to have this conversation and to have this gathering um, and move forward these issues. And yesterday's news and events in many ways really do show the importance of race in U.S. politics. The Mississippi election, it does actually seem that uh, it was the black vote that turned out in support of Thad Cochran to defeat the even more right-wing uh, Tea Party candidate. The initial results showing that precincts in black churches had significantly higher turnout yesterday when the, uh, the, black, uh, when the uh, Republican primary ballot was happening. So it does seem that that, that state was showing that uh, the significance of that community in terms of turning that election in that direction at a point in time when the majority of Mississippians under the age of 18 are African American. So in terms of where that state will be trending um, over the next several decades. Uh, also yesterday in Maryland, Anthony Brown won the primary um, in the, for the Maryland governor's race. <clears throat> Positioning him to, uh, well, I guess succeed Deval Patrick as the black governor um, in the country. <laughs> um, but we're excited that, and that really is like the significance of the large voters of color population in Maryland, which is determinative or uh, significantly influential, in, particularly in primary races there. Also yesterday, we were struck that I was watching uh, MSNBC and Chris Hayes was doing this week-long special around race, race in the U.S., race in U.S. politics, and had a whole segment, seg uh, section on Georgia and on how Georgia can turn blue, can Georgia can be trending blue, um, featuring a number of people who are, you know, our friends and allies, and, and um, Ben Jealous and Stacey Abrams, Julian Bond really making the argument, even off of making the math argument, and I was like, I felt for some like he had stolen our PowerPoints when we were getting started with PowerPack Plus, but it's, um, it was really great to see that uh, argument, getting to that level of prominence and, and, and support. And then also today is the one year anniversary of uh, Wendy Davis's filibuster in Texas, which happened a year ago, and then now a year later, Wendy Davis and Leticia Vandepoot are running for governor and lieutenant governor of Texas, in a state that is seen as deeply red, but when you drill down in the numbers, we tend to lose around by about 600,000 votes in Texas, where there are three million registered non-voting people of color within the state. And so now there's significant efforts to actually try to invest in increasing the registration and turnout um, within Texas, which can actually make it a much more competitive state. So it seems like the time really is right for a conversation about the role of race in U.S. politics. Some people know I'm actually working um, on a book on the history of uh, race and politics, and looking back at the history of the country, it really puts things in perspective when you really dig into the various particulars of all of how it played itself out. And for most of U.S. history, I think these things we know, but when you think about them and say them out loud, you're actually just like, oh, that kind of is true. So for most of U.S. history, people of color couldn't vote. For most of U.S. history, women couldn't vote. And so, and really only with the 1965 Voting Rights Act that you begin to have larger numbers of people of color voting within the history of this, uh, of the country. So most of the U.S. history's politics has been about conservative whites and more liberal whites competing for white swing voters. And generally, the liberal and progressive white voters tended to lose that election, that, that, those battles. Since 1965, however, the country has been changing dramatically. The elimination of legalized voter suppression with the Voting Rights Act, birthright trends, immigration trends, there's now a new majority within America. And it's a majority built on the bedrock of the country's communities of color. People of color and progressive whites are now the majority of the US population. That is the coalition that elected and re-elected Obama. And we no longer have to chase the shrinking block of swing voters in order to be able to win national elections and local and state elections. So where do we go after the first black president? That's what we're here to discuss today. We're here to chart a course for the progressive movement and the Democratic Party, to learn from leaders on the front lines and in the trenches, to discuss a policy agenda which will inspire the new majority to participate and be engaged in our politics, 
Over lunch, we will celebrate the uh, 10th anniversary of Power Pack, a sister organization to Power Pack Plus. It's the 501c4 organization. Uh, Senator Booker will share remarks uh, with us over lunch. We were proud to back um, Corey in his uh, Senate campaign last year, and we were very pleased that, in keeping with some of the things we're talking about here, he entrusted his campaign to an African-American campaign manager who has been elevated through that effort and through his trust, and that trust being rewarded with him now being a leading U.S. Senator. So over the course of the day, we hope to show that embracing race and running towards people of color instead of away from them is the way to win. Um, as our social media maven Amy Shannon uh, uh, talked about, we have a hashtag for those who are Twitter proficient, um, win in 2014. And we think that the way to win in 2014 is by embracing race, and that the, that is the way to hold the Senate this year, North Carolina, Louisiana, Colorado, Georgia, are states where voters of color can provide the margin of difference. And that if we are to win those states by investing in and mobilizing and engaging voters of color, that is how we will actually hold the Senate. It's the way to win in 2016 in terms of expanding the map, the uh, battleground states to include Georgia, Texas, Arizona, other states going through demographic changes of that nature. And it's the way to build lasting progressive majority and progressive power within this country. So we hope today that you also have a chance to catch up with old friends and meet new friends. And we're just really delighted that um, you're all here today and we have a chance to share our collective lessons to be able to move U.S. politics forward, lift up these lessons, and offer an example uh, for the country and for the party for the progressive movement. So let's get on with the show. Essentially decoupled government from the lives of the people. Uh, and, you know, Trey quoted, it, but, you know, hi, I'm from the government, I'm here to help is a terrifying phrase, especially if you live in abject poverty. 